Hi folks, welcome back to the channel and today I want to talk about the bit of a death knoll to uh, LPG as far as camping is concerned anyway um, obviously recently there's been quite an issue of availability of LPG and also the price increase so with that in mind I've made changes to my van and started cooking solely on electric even finding somewhat ingenious methods of cooking everyday items on electric rather than using the oven. So let's talk about how this actually started out. So over the last month or so, LPG has been getting absolutely terrible to get hold of. Um, I tried, I think it was almost 15 petrol stations to get hold of LPG. And in the end, it wasn't actually a petrol station I got hold of it, it was just some um, gas outlet guy in the middle of Birmingham that uh, a friend told me about. And I think this is becoming the bit of an issue now is that wherever it was available, either the uh, fuel station has actually withdrawn it and replaced it with electric hookup points and stuff like that to charge electric vehicles, or there's just a shortage of LPG. When you do find it, you'll find it's over a pound a litre or thereabouts now as well. So uh, it's getting pretty crazy as well. So what I thought is to make me less dependent on LPG for everything, so for a start off, diesel heater is the perfect way to heat the vehicle uh, without worrying about LPG. Very easy to install. Like I said, we've had it now for over a year. Um, and even down to minus 20 temperatures when we were coming through um, you know, the top end of Turkey and it got down to yeah, minus 20 something or whatever. It was still fine. Coped with it fine. Everything was all right. Nothing froze inside the van or anything like that. And we were quite warm. So a diesel heater... Um, you know, performed really well. It didn't clog up. Everything worked okay. We didn't make any other special um, arrangements or fittings to it. it. It just worked. So can't argue with that. If you want hot water. Now, fortunately, we do have a Truma system in our van, which works off LPG and electric. And this brings me on to the next one is the recent upgrades I've made to the electric system in the van allows me to run my Truma off my leisure batteries via the inverter um, so if I want hot water for a shower I can simply put it on boost it runs about 25 minutes ish thereabouts and uses around about 19 18 to 19 amp hours of power from the battery uh, I've got 300 amp hour of lithium so taking 19 amp hours out to get hot water for you know, for me to have a shower, uh, wash up, I can then have a shower the next day because the trim is quite good and it holds on to that heat quite well. Um, I would say that's pretty good, actually. You know, it's something I can do if I'm driving down the road. Now I've got the two B2Bs in there that give me 60 amps of charge into my batteries. If my batteries are fully charged and I'm still driving, then I can go and put the trimmer on and get hot water. There are systems that will do that automatically. Um, in fact, you can get a hot water tank with a 12 volt element in there and the system will detect the fact that your batteries are fully charged. And at that point, it will then start the 12 volt element up. So either by solar, you sat there and your batteries are fully charged and the system goes, right, okay, then well, batteries are charged. So I'm gonna flick on the 12 volt element in the water tank and give you some free hot water. And it works out the same if you're traveling down the road with a B2B charging away. Obviously, if it's charged the batteries, the B2B is going to shut down, but you're still traveling. So you might as well utilize the B2B being there and charge from hot water. There's also systems out there that will give you hot water from your diesel heater as well um, by putting a little sort of a tiny little radiator in front of one of the heater outlets. Um, and that radiator then sort of goes into the hot water system a bit like a normal immersion tank um, and has a coil wrapped around the actual hot water system. And I think one of the UK supplies of that is bubble vans and I'll link to them in the video description as well if you're interested in that. Um, so yeah, there are many ways that you can utilize the power you've got in your van um, and step away from your dependency of LPG. Obviously we changed our fridge um, last year to a 12 volt compressor fridge. So that's just like a domestic fridge with a compressor in the back of it, but it uses 12 volts rather than 240 volts. I know a lot of people use a domestic 240 volt fridge with their inverter on and stuff like that, but 
you are wasting power having your inverter just sat there unless you can control your inverter remotely via a temperature switch and relays if you just leave your inverter on all the time then you're going to be wasting probably 25 to 50 watts in standby mode for your inverter so a 12 volt compressor fridge obviously negates that waste as well so we've spoken about getting hot air around the van heat hot water as well um, and cooling obviously the beers down in the fridge which is quite important as well or you know the ham and the cheese for the toasty so that's that bit sorted out now the best part about this is obviously cooking and there are quite a few options um for example the options we've got is george foreman so a toasty maker doesn't have to be george foreman obviously other brands are available um, but yeah a toasty maker um to which you know you can cook all sorts of things in there um you know sort of meats um cheeses um you know you can make toasty bread there's all sorts of things in there pizzas and all that kind of stuff that you can do in them so that's really cool as well and the second one obviously we've got is the induction hob which allows us to put um you know induction friendly um pans and things like that on there frying pans um so you can have soup and beans and fry ups and cook all sorts of other things in there as well you can have pasta and all that kind of stuff all by using the induction hob now the induction hub and the um, toasty maker George Foreman with the grill, uh, quite ingenious devices in that they obviously get to a temperature you set um, and then the element inside just comes on and then goes off at the required intervals to keep that temperature. And that works really well at reducing the overall power needed to cook on electric because obviously an element that essentially is getting hot is a dead short across the battery that's why it's getting hot that's all an element is really it's just a short against your two feeds of electricity and it just gets really hot um, so the least amount of time you can have that element on um, the obviously the longer you can cook for the more your batteries are going to last in there uh, in that as well now we've also used a hot pot or uh, what do you call it a pressure cooker something like that um, in the past as well mandy's cooked all sorts of food on that and that has the same sort of thing as well whereby it gets to a certain temperature by creating pressure inside with a bit of water air pressure then cooks and the element inside you know kicks in kicks out kicks in kicks out to get to that point point. Uh, and that's really good as well because for about 20 minutes of it getting to pressure and then cooking afterwards that only used around about 15 amp hours of power so that was really good as well and obviously even less if you just have a few things in there like baked potatoes or chicken or something like that the, the shorter the cooking time the less power it's used obviously um, now we did try some other things like a ramosca but that used an awful lot of power because essentially it was just on the element was just on while you were cooking and uh, there was no degree of control of how hot or kind of what temperature you want to set at so it kicked and kicked out it was just on all the time so we deemed that um, to be too costly of a power hungry kind of like nature um, for what we were doing in the van so we didn't actually bother with uh, with that much more than a few days of tr uh, trialing it out although it is good but it didn't offer anything more than the induction hub with a pan and that kind of stuff as well um, there are other things like air fryers again um, air fryers are something that i know a lot of people use um, it is something we trialed out but again the power to weight ratio and power hungerness and things like that we decided to give that one a miss after about a week or two of trying it out um, to get a really small thing it's one person kind of cooking um, and they use a fair bit of power to be fair so we gave that a miss the next one obviously you can get a low power microwave uh, which you can do all sorts of things you know baked potatoes you can well you know all sorts of things i am not the person to tell anybody what to cook in a microwave or a pan or a anything else a grill obviously but uh, yeah the point i'm making is that a microwave a low power microwave like 800 watt 750 watt something like that is still going to be perfectly good for cooking all the sorts of meals that you could cook you know supermarket ready meals and all that kind of stuff stuff from frozen jacket potatoes all that kind of thing but it's still going to be something that will kick in and out and in and out to maintain that cooking temperature inside rather than just being on permanently. Therefore, reducing the overall load on your batteries, meaning you can use it more often without worrying about it. So 
that's the point of um, you know of moving away from LPG is that there are many other things out there that you can do to negate either having LPG altogether or to massively reduce your need for LPG. You can get a kettle to boil water. There are all sorts of things, you know, if you really think about it, that you can move away from LPG and therefore um, increase your longevity of being off grid without worrying about going up and using fossil fuels and things like that. And I will point out as well, it's pretty much 100% renewable energy. If you sat there collecting solar, absolutely, definitely. Um, if you're running your B2B, I've noticed even at 60 amps, when our two B2Bs are now massively giving out a charge to the, the three batteries we've got, um, the power drain from the engine, so the noticeable loss of power or extra fuel it's using, is absolutely negligible to the point of we used to get an average of about 26 and a half mpg that's pretty much through the last sort of ten thousand miles of our trip now i'm running two uh, b2b's and an extra battery to charge so it's actually getting something to do and um, the two b2b's have changed it to be 26 mpg so half mpg i am not going to worry about given the fact that then it gives me all these opportunities to cook on electric and heat on um, diesel and all that kind of stuff. You know, have a shower on electric. I can do all the other things I could normally do. And um, yeah, I've still got a cold beer at the end of the day as well. Now, I know a lot of this is going to be, yeah, yeah, I understand that, John, but I haven't got the skills you've got or I haven't got the balls to do this to my van and rip the three-way fridge out and put a 12-volt one in or I don't understand all this, you know, a lot, what do a lot of people call it? Uh, wizardry of electrics or anything like that. Um, how do I install two B2Bs? Can you have two B2Bs? Wouldn't one tell the other one it's fully charged? And these are all the silly things that you read on forums that people type in there. You know, you can't have two B2Bs because one will tell the other one that it's charging and the second one will shut down. <sighs> Bless them. I think a lot of people just want to go blah, 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 blah uh, without actually using their brain or even using these things themselves and therefore gaining the experience and to this point I am quite willing to help people out um, so my background as um, electronics engineer and also working in nuclear power stations at very high voltages and everything in between um, does give me obviously a greater understanding of uh, of what most people might call electrically wizardry or whatever um but i think the best thing that i can offer you is the fact that i've lived in a van for what is it long now it's like three years or something like that now um lived in this van for two years and all the things that i've done to this van and everything that works as you know from our channel you can see how it works and how we use it there's no hiding the fact that you know everything is as I say, it's not like a, oh yeah, well, I've never seen him cook on electric before and I've never seen him do this, that or the other. So yeah, if you need my help, don't leave a comment down below. Um, go to the website, I'll put a link on the screen right now. Click the contact form and fill in the form and um, yeah, leave all your details and that sends me an email and then I'll email you back. Um, alternatively, there um, obviously is direct message on Instagram if you want to do it that way and we can have a chat that way um, I'm aiming really for a consultancy kind of service so to hold your hand while you do something or to help you realize an idea that you've got or even if it's something like yeah I've checked it all out I've got my diagram and everything like that John what I really want is for you to just to say yes that'll work or is there a better way to do it or whatever um, if you need anything like that then I'm here to help you because I've seen firsthand how bad a lot of people do things with the aid of, you know, internet forums um, and how bad that can go as well. Um, I've also got a lot of mates who go out there and sort of uh, repair vans after people have messed things up by following the advice of people on forums. And I've seen how bad that can go as well. So whilst um, I appreciate that you may want me to do the work for you, um, I'm more of a I'd like to show you how it's done 
or I'd like to explain how it's done or something like that. So if you want me to do the work for you, we can discuss that if you want. But predominantly, I would be an advisor or at best, I would think I would come down to wherever you are or you can come to wherever I am and we can work on it together so that you have got the understanding of how whatever it is you've installed works and why it works that way and why it's installed that way. So should you ever need to upgrade it or change it, or if anything ever goes wrong with your van, you've got all the information you need and you know, you know exactly where it is and what it's doing and all that kind of stuff so that you can fix or change or whatever. Um, and that's just the way that I work. I would rather work that way than just come along and say, right, there's my invoice, I've done all the work and you go off and go, right, cool, I can switch that on now and it works fine. Um, I like to give people the understanding of what it is that um, I've done or helped them do. Um, that's just the way that I see it anyway. So yeah, not that I'm saying that you all want, you know, mega amps of lithium in your van and mega B2Bs and all that kind of stuff. But if you've got any insight of what's going on right now with getting hold of M LPG and you are more of a wild camper than you want to have a campsite, so you don't normally just get to the campsite and plug in on electric, even then you might not have the option to cook on electric, so you might still be using gas. Um, but yeah, if you want to take it a step further in your van, maybe you just want to change the lights on your van. Maybe you want to put a nice flashy stereo in your van, um, put some solar on your roof, you know, put some USB sockets or lights or anything like that. It's not necessarily electrics or diesel heaters or anything like that, I guess, but anything to do with a camper. So that is a van conversion, motorhome, anything like that. Um, then yeah, just get in touch. I understand that there's a lot of people who go out and build vans from scratch. And to be fair, that's dead easy. You start off with nothing and then you build it up as you go. It's fairly easy. The biggest issue is retrofitting as far as I see, because you've got to deal with everything that's there in front of you now, fit your stuff to that, and then not obviously mess up the other stuff in the meantime. Maybe just finding wires is difficult to do. Or well, like, how do I take a three-way fridge out and replace it with a 12-volt compressor fridge? All that information, quite willing to help. Again, this has come from the mods that I've done on this van over the last uh, month or so. And obviously what I've done to Mandy's van as well. A lot of you um, have obviously got in touch and gone, wow, I didn't realise you could do that. Uh, I didn't realise you could take a 22-year-old van and bring it almost to modern standards with everything. Um, so yeah, it seems like there's a lot of you out there that might need a little bit of guidance. So yeah, get in touch. Like I say, go to our website, fill out the contact form or hit me up on Instagram as a yeah, private message, a DM. Um, and that way we can have a discussion about it. I can tell you um, if I can help you, how I can help you. Um, and obviously um, what my rates are as well, because I'm not going to do it for free. I just thought I'd put that out there now, just in case you were thinking you might want to pay me in Jack Daniels or beers. Um, I prefer cash if that's not mind. Well, you know, like money, not potentially, you know, cash that I'm going to put in my back pocket. But you get my drift anyway. Right, so I think that's enough on this video. If you've got any hints and tips on uh, how to get away with not using any LPG, then obviously leave them down in the comments for everyone else to read. And I shall catch you on the next video. Take care, guys. Bye.